Hello, this is Matthew Chang from HLB. Thank you so much for taking the time to the call on Busy Weekend. Could you introduce yourself? Uh, absolutely. Thank you, Matthew. So my name is uh, Dr. Arlo McGinn, and I'm the Managing Director of Product Development uh, here at LSK Biopharma. Thank you, Arlo. Uh, as you have seen, the Korea market reaction to the NGES study top-line results have been very negative. Do you feel there has been some overreaction in the public market to the top-line results? Uh, uh, absolutely, yes. Um, I think the main point to stress here is that although the trial did not meet the overall survival endpoint, uh, that doesn't mean that we believe that the technology or that rivaserinib has failed. Um, one major reason for this is that rivaserinib is already successfully being used and, and has been used for a number of years now in the Chinese market. Um, the second reason is that the data that we've seen from our own clinical programs, including um, the, the ANGEL study, uh, indicate to us that rivaserinib is, in fact, working. Um, there are a lot of reasons why a study may not meet its primary endpoint. Uh, and in this case, uh, while the ANGEL study did not meet the, the primary endpoint, we do not believe that these results mean that rivaserinib itself has failed. LSKV just announced that the primary endpoint was not met, but that the secondary endpoint seems positive. This has caused a lot of concern in the Korean market. HLB is getting a lot of questions asking if ribosaranib has failed based on this one press release. It might be helpful to disclose additional data. What is the reason that you cannot disclose other information or results about the NJ study? Well, there are actually a few reasons that we can't disclose additional data. Uh, the first is that we, we haven't had a chance to review all of the data yet. Uh, the additional secondary endpoints and other patient data, such as uh, safety adverse events, is still undergoing quality review. Um, we're not expecting to actually get draft figures, tables, and listings of the full clinical trial and clinical study data set until late July. Um, secondly, we intend to publish the full report with our principal's invest principal investigators uh, within the next few months. In order for us to uh, get accepted to peer-reviewed uh, scientific publications, it's necessar necessary that we represent that the data has not yet been released. Um, finally, because the overall survival presented some surprising data, uh, it's necessary, us, necessary for us to internally study the data, data, perform quality control, and come up with a plan for what we need to do in order to file an NDA in the gastric cancer monotherapy indication. So why did you have the press release that NJ study did not meet the primary endpoint? Well, we, we had the press release early because a, a lot of people have been waiting to see if we met the overall survival and progression-free survival endpoint. Uh, if we had met the overall survival endpoint, people will generally know and understand that there's a good chance that we can file the uh, NDA in the United States later this year. Um, so we asked the statisticians to give us the, the data for overall survival and progression-free survival first and very quickly. Um, this is the first data that we received, and we, we need to be discussing this data with potential partners and, and investors. Uh, inevitably, rumors can get out, and we want it to be fully transparent so that business can be done in a fair manner. Um, this, 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 this informs all of our partners, collaborators, and investigators uh, that the NDA will likely be delayed, and we need to come up with a, an alternative plan for filing in the third and fourth line gastric cancer indication. What is the main impact of the NJ study missing the OS endpoint? Well, for one, this will likely delay the NDA filing. Um, we, we need to take a step back and work on a plan that's the most efficient way to get the required data for filing in the gastric cancer third and fourth line indication. Can you give an example of the strategy could be going for with gastric cancer third or fourth line? Uh, absolutely. Well, one option for a strategy would be to leverage the positive data that we do see in the ANGEL study and conduct, conduct a confirmatory study. Um, I believe this could be a smaller, faster clinical study, um, but we'll be working internally in the coming weeks to develop the full plan for this uh, possible confirmatory study. This obviously involves efforts from our clinical, uh, regulatory, and uh, business teams. What is your overall feeling about Ribosaranib after receiving the NGES study primary endpoint data? Well, 
we still believe that rivastarinib is an active cancer drug. Um, the vast body of data that uh, we've acquired and that we've seen from Hung Rui's development in China indicates that this is still true. Um, because there's positive signals in the ANGEL study, I believe that the issue with the overall survival that we've seen here is, is actually related to the changing way that gastric cancer is being treated. Um, even over the short period of time with the, where the, uh, when the ANGEL study was performed, the standards of uh, care for gastric cancer have changed significantly. Um, we, we still believe the ANGEL study was designed correctly, but considering these changes in gastric cancer treatment, the ANGEL study did not, uh, unfortunately, fully provide the data necessary to file for approval. Um, I believe we will get a lot of good data out of the ANGEL study and that this will help us uh, identify a path forward so that we can file an NDA in the third and fourth line gastric cancer indication. Um, we also feel that the ANGEL study data will be extremely helpful and will inform us on uh, designing pivotal studies in our other indications, such as second line gastric cancer and colorectal cancer as well. Um, we're disappointed that the study missed the primary endpoint and did not provide the data that we need to file for approval based on a single study at this time. But the biggest challenge that this is going to create for LSK Biopharma is that it delays when we will be able to file for our first market approval outside of China. Um, we're still extremely thankful for the uh, patients and for the investigators who supported the study and uh, made, it, uh, made it possible. Thanks very much, Arlo. Have a nice weekend. Uh, thank you as uh, thank you as well, Matthew.